Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. All right, so I'm um, really excited about this set of wine reviews I'm about to record today. And uh, we'll just get started with the first wine. So this one is the 2012 uh, Diron Carmena Selection. Uh, Carmena. And I bought this, so when I went to Oregon back in October of, of 18, uh, 19, I'm sorry, of 19, I uh, stopped by the Dundee Bistro uh, one of the days for lunch and I found this wine from Turkey. It was on the list and the cool thing is I could just buy that wine sealed and walk out like retail. So each state has their little quirks on what you can and can't do. Uh, living in Texas for the last I think almost 12 years now, um, I'm used to the Texas laws and I would not have been able to do that in a restaurant in Texas. I would have had to have taken a little bit of the wine out of the bottle somehow, some way before I could have taken it out. Uh, the other thing that's kind of cool about Oregon, uh, there's no sale, there's no sales tax on like restaurants. Like when you go out to eat to a restaurant, there's no sales tax. And I think there's not even like grocery stores. So I don't think there's a sales tax period. I think there is, I don't know what it's on, but anyway, so let's get into, let's get into the wine first. I'm gonna give you some uh, some uh, knowledge here, and for a lot of the wines that I'm about to record in this one session, you're going to have a lot of information I'm gonna be hitting you up with. Almost all of, actually, I think every single one of these wines is a wine that I would not be quote tested on as far as a tasting. So that's why I'm really excited about doing these wines. I've been holding off reviewing these wines for a long time, some of them for years, honestly. This one is actually, I think, the most recent purchase of all the wines that I'm gonna to review today. So, <clears throat> Turkey. So, uh, I'm gonna be uh, I'm going to be reviewing, actually, a lot of wines from this part of the world that are kind of called the historic wine region. And when I get to uh, a wine later in, like, I don't know, like three or four weeks, <laughs> when you actually see it, I will go through what all those countries are, but Turkey is actually one of those countries. So this is one of the earliest areas uh, for winemaking. About 2000 BC is when they have records of actual winemaking for this area. Uh, legend has it that Noah planted a vineyard uh, after the flood near Mount Ararat, which uh, Mount Ararat is on the border of Turkey and Armenia and Georgia. And there's archeological evidence of wine uh, it's 6,000 BC uh, in the, just the cold total area, really more like in Georgia, Armenia. And then there's actually evidence of wine in 7,000 BC in China, but they haven't found an actual winery. Again, I'll have a wine later on that they have actual archeological evidence of a winery, uh, but it's not in Turkey. So with Turkey, they've been, they were making wine for a long time there. And then 1923, uh, well, they were making wine in Turkey for a long time, but the influence of uh, the Muslim religion pretty much quashed a lot of alcohol, uh, a lot of making of alcohol. So it was banned for centuries until like 1920, until 1923 when it became a secular country officially. So alcohol became okay to not just manufacture, but consume, sell, consume and all that. There's a drink called Raki, uh, R-A-K-I. It is, that's what the area is best known for. It's a sweetened, often anise-flavored alcoholic drink. It's traditionally produced from a raisin or grape spirit called Suma that is distilled to a maximum of 94.55% ABV. That's like almost 200 proof. And so this way, what, uh, 192 point whatever proof. Uh, spirit is not a highly rectified spirit. Unlike other flavored spirits, Iraqi producers consider that the Suma 
has an important role, which is that that um, uh, the raisin grape spirit has an important role to play in the flavor of Rocky itself. The Suma um, is mixed with a highly rectified spirit, is diluted with water, redistilled with uh, aniseed, and then the spirit is collected. Uh, and then the spirit that is collected is around 79 to 80% ABV, which is like about 40, I'm sorry. Yeah, which is about um, 40 proof. Sorry, I was reversing my alcohol. No, 80, sorry, 160 proof. <laughs> so it's around 160 proof. Uh, the flavor still is diluted at that point and then it's sweetened and rested for a minimum of 30 days prior to the sale uh, in order to allow the flavors to harmonize. So this is powerful stuff. Uh, it doesn't say what it's diluted to, but probably around a 40% ABV. Since the early 2000s, alcohol laws actually becoming more restrictive. And this is really just because the leadership in Turkey is uh, moving more towards a uh, Muslim, uh, I guess, rule, not an officially Muslim rule. And the, uh, in 2013, uh, it's the latest like laws that were enacted that I could find. Now, there, there may have been laws since 2013, but the latest ones that I could find, find that it bans all forms of advertising, including promotions, sponsored activities, festivals, and free giveaways. So basically a wine tasting, like at a winery, just, just even a winery, uh, would be banned. You can't like have a wine festival. You can't, you know, have advertisements in uh, a magazine or like on a billboard or anything like that. So, and, and then like in the United States, we also have a lot of bans on alcohol and tobacco as far as advertising, but you can still at least like have a magazine ad. You can have that type of stuff. My, my guess is that you probably can even produce a, a magazine about alcohol in in Turkey. So uh, yeah, and 83% of the population is considered a teetotaler. teetotaler. So basically they, they consider themselves like they don't drink. So that's a lot of, a high percentage of the population. And then even this, the uh, Diron website, when you go there, they ask if you're 24 years or older, not just like, usually it's like 21. In some places in Europe, it's 18. When you go to the, and those are like voluntary, You're, they don't know. You click say yes. So like I always, Soapbox, I think that's like the stupidest thing in the world that a website is asking what your age is when there's no way to prove it. I mean, if I'm not of that age and I want to find out the information, I'm still going to click yes. If I click, click no, it sends you to like, I don't know where it sends you to, but I've done this before. I've accidentally clicked no and it sends you to like Yahoo or something like that. Uh, the number of indigenous grapes in Turkey, it's a wide range of numbers, anywhere from 600 to 1,200. That's a huge difference. So I don't know where the actual number is, but they say there's only about 60 that are actually used for commercial production, and then they'll have some international varieties. Uh, the broader Anatolia region, which is where this wine is from, uh, is usually indigenous. However, this, this wine has a blend of some other stuff. Uh, Diran was founded in 1958 by Mustafa Vasiv Diran uh, in the northern part of Turkey around the Tokat region. There should be a map that's popping up now. Uh, it, is, it is still family owned and his son Ali Diran uh, has taken it over and they basically highlight indigenous varieties. With that said, this wine, which is the 2012 uh, Carmana selection from Diran is from Anatolia is a dry white wine and it is a 50-50 blend. I'll give you a get there on the thing. 50-50 blend of uh, Nar... Uh, I thought I had the pronunciation of that grape. I do, up here. Narin. It sounds like Narin when I go into Google, but I think there's like a little, like a little soft C, like Narin, right? Uh, and Chardonnay. So I, I went to the website, got the tech notes, has two grams per liter of sugar, uh, residual sugar, 3.1 grams per liter of acid, 13.5% alcohol, uh, aged 12 months in French oak plus one and a half years in stainless before bottling uh, and ferment, fermented in stainless. So what is this, um, 
what is this Noreen uh, grape about? It literally means delicate or fragile. Comes from the Tokat region, one of the most important white grapes of Turkey. Although it is also widely planted as a table grape. So it's not just like a grape used for wine, but it's like a table, you know, a grape that you eat, which we're not used to wine grapes being grapes that you typically eat. Like table grapes are usually not considered the best grapes to use for winemaking, hence like Concord, right? Um, and then uh, in 2010, that was the, the latest information that I have from Janice Robinson's book about grapes, which came out like two years ago. Uh, there are 2,100 acres planted, uh, making it the most widely planted white grape. Uh, white wines can be dry and off dry, and most likely the only white wine that's capable of aging from that region, like the grape. So it's like the only one that can be really aged. All right, uh, let's get into the wine. So I've got my monitor there and it's locked up. Oh, no, here we go again. So far, Filmic Pro hasn't crashed on me in the last couple months that I've been using this stuff, but it locks up a lot still. I actually just got a resupply of Corvin cartridges because of this whole stuff that we're going through and I'm not wanting to drink an entire like bottle of wine every time, but I'm still like drinking a whole bottle of wine at the same time. All right. Really like nice golden color on that. I mean, we are talking, you know, eight years old. Technically it's more like a seven and a half-ish year old wine. But um, so that color that you see, and you can see it on there, that's great, you can see it. That A lot of that color is really just from age in the bottle more than anything else. Uh, but because there's only 12 months of French oak aging, and then the rest is in stainless, which <clears throat> that's not really gonna do any oxidation when it comes to the wine. All right, let's, uh, let's check it out. Oh, by the way, everything that I listed, it will be as far as uh, the Duran website, also the Vino Rye website, which is their importer into the United States. Uh, that'll have information too, that's where I got a lot of information from. And then uh, the Dundee Bistro, give a little props to them for uh, for buying the wine. So you should check them out. They had, I, just, I had a really good lunch there that day. So there's a, <clears throat> there's a ton of, not a ton, there's a, there's a touch of oxidation, not a ton, but I get kind of like that bruised apple. Kind of a bruised fruit quality. There was a little bit of nuttiness, some caramel too. I was also getting a little bit of that kind of a roasted popcorn. Um, and that's probably, some of this stuff is probably coming from the Chardonnay. Like, I don't know what Duran by itself necessarily should smell and taste like, but I am picking up similar aromas at least that Chardonnay would give you. Yeah, there's also a bit of mintiness, a bit of green and grassiness to it. I mean, so far, it, I mean, not it's not highly aromatic, but so far it smells pretty cool. Let's just taste it. So there's a little bit of nuttiness to it. Now that might be because it's seven plus years old, um, like a little peanut shell. The golden apple, it's kind of bruised too, just like the head on the nose. There's, um, there's like juiciness to it. Like it's a bruised apple, but there's also like, honestly it's like a, like a grape, not like in a muscat, you know, where you can kind of taste grape, like the grape in mus muscat, but there's kind of like a, like a white grape uh, flavor to it. I don't really get the caramel on the palate. I 
I like the wine. It's even though there's very little residual sugar left, there is a sweetness of fruit. It's a quality of the fruit that's really giving you that kind of apparent sweetness, but it's really dominated by the golden apple that's kind of bruised and that little grape-ish quality, a little bit of peach. Caramel is really not there. And as far as anything else that would really give me oak aging, I don't really get a ton of it. Knowing that there's oak in this, I don't necessarily get vanilla or, or spices a lot of. That could be because of bottle age that is starting to kind of fade out, but it's kind of there. And a little bit of that popcorn, but it's not like that burnt popcorn I sometimes get from Chardonnays. It's more of a corn, like maybe a cornbreadish. I like the wine. It's easy to drink. It is refreshing. There's a richness to it, that for sure. And that's really gonna come from not just the grape, but that is gonna come from the oak. But you're gonna get a little bit of richness to it. I like the wine a lot. It's a cool wine. Now, if I was giving this wine blind, I would just think it's Chardonnay. Because I think and again, this could be, Duran just may have a lot of Chardonnay-like qualities. And this might be why the Bistro picked this one up. Not because why it was brought in. I mean, obviously, they didn't, the, other people have it. But they might have been like a Chardonnay substitute. Something like, it's like Chardonnay. I'm not quite like Chardonnay. It has that, it has that Chardonnay-esque quality to it. Oh, I forgot to tell you how much I paid for this. I mean, it's in the, it was in the lower third. Uh, I bought it for 25 bucks at the Bistro, which... It means it's probably like retail. And I mean, the prices at the Bistro, I don't remember them specifically, but the prices didn't seem to be too crazy for, for the wine. But my feeling is it's probably like a 12-ish dollar bottle of wine, maybe 10 retail, 12, 10, 12, 15 dollar bottle of wine. So nothing crazy. Like it's probably not like a, six dollar bottle of wine that's been marked up four times which is normal for restaurants so i should have looked that up i'll try to look that up and put in a lower third if i can find an actual retail price maybe it is closer to 25. but it is delicious i like it a lot <clears throat> i find it's, it's an alternative to chardonnay but it doesn't have that really oaky buttery i don't i don't think it going through any really mallow if it did it was really really little very little mallow doesn't have the oaky quality, doesn't have that vanilla and buttery. It's not quite like, it, it's it's like a white burgundy in some in some ways, which a lot of white burgundies will have just enough oak to, to, lick, to give you that extra bit of structure and richness, but not that over the top California Napa Valley, like oak monster, like to, to evoke Gary there. I think, I don't think anyone else uses that term. I didn't invent it, so. It's a good wine. I'm glad I got it. All right, so that's going to do it for this episode. Um, as always, you can click the links above to friend me up. I'll have everything in the description below or you know in the description for the episode as far as links and all that to check out everything. There are also a link for PayPal down there if you want to throw a few ducats. Yes, I know. I mean, this is recorded in March. Or actually, it's recorded in April of 2020. So yes, I know there's lots of stuff going on. Everyone's asking for money. This is my normal thing. I'm just saying, if you want to throw some ducats my way, cool. If not, big deal. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time.